Som chen koi. Please be seated. The court is now in session. Le président, l'audience est ouverte. For today and tomorrow's proceedings, the chamber will be a testimony of an expert through CCE 82 in relation to the facts and regulation of marriage. Sur le segment. Mr. Secretary, please report to the attendance of the parties and other individuals to today's proceedings. Greffier. La greffière. Mr. President, Monsieur for today's président, proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Sont Mr. Nuentier is present Monsieur in the holding cell downstairs. Dans la he has waived sous-sol. his right to be present Et in the courtroom. D'être physiquement présent dans le the waiver has been delivered to the Greffier, and the expert who is to testify today, that is to TCE 82, confirms that through her best knowledge, she has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is no and kills of home, or to any other civil parties admitted in this case. The expert is ready to be called by the chamber. Thank you. Se tient prête à être appelé dans le The chamber now decides on the request by Nunti. The chamber has received a waiver from Nunti. Est saisi d'un document de renonciation présenté par Nunti. Dated 13 September 2016, September 2016, which states that due to his health, that is headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long. And in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requires to waive his right to be present at the 13 September 2016 hearing. He advises that his counsel advised him about the consequence of this waiver that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his right to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented to or admitted by this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nunti by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, Dated 13 September 2016, which notes that today Nunti has a back pain and feels dizzy when he sits for long, and recommends that the chamber so grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunti his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs by an audiovisual means. The Chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to lead the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunti can follow. That applies for the whole day. And before we begin hearing testimony of expert to CCE82, the Chamber wishes to hear oral submissions and observations by parties on two matters. First is the request to submit the nine documents, that is the disclosure. From by OCP, document E319-59. Yesterday, Nunti's defense uh, sent an email to the chamber that they wish to make an oral observation on the denied request to admit these uh, nine documents. For that reason, the floor will be given to the parties to 
le champ So there were nine documents, and from what we can see, we do not have access to the documents themselves yet. We understand from the annex describing the documents that they're dated from November 2013, November 2014, October 2015, and March and June 2016. From what we can also see from the summary annex, five of the documents are indicated as containing potentially exculpatory information. This is documents number two and numbers six to nine. Two of the documents are disclosed as they are allegedly related to the prosecution's Rule 87 request E319-58, and these are documents four and five. And there is no justification provided for the disclosure of the two remaining documents numbers one and three. From what we can see again from the summary annex, as we do not have access to the documents, six are related to the regulation of marriage. So we just wanted to make a number of brief submissions with respect to these documents. The first thing is that from what we can observe, the prosecution indicates that it sought authorization to disclose the documents in June and August 2016, and that the OCIJ subsequently provided authorization for disclosure on the 31st of August 2016. But two of the documents actually had been authorized for disclosure back in December 2015. So the submissions we would like to make are as to the timing of the prosecution's disclosure of potentially exculpatory materials dating from as early as 2013, only hours before the appearance of the expert to TCE slash 82. Our understanding is that the prosecution has an obligation to disclose exculpatory materials at the earliest opportunity. Now, as we said, some of the disclosures appear to be dated from 2013. From our perspective, this appears to be a violation of the prosecution's disclosure obligation. So what we'd like to know is, why is the prosecution only disclosing these documents now? In addition, even though the prosecution appears to have had authorization to disclose the documents on the 31st of August, it waited until the day before the appearance of 2 TCE 82 to disclose documents on the regulation of marriage. Again, we would like to know why this has happened. From our perspective, what this means at this stage is that we are losing an opportunity to question the regulation of marriage expert witness on potentially exculpatory Evidence. And I will note that, according to the summary annex, the evidence in question was produced by the same NGO which produced the two reports on the case file which formed the core basis of the decision to appoint the expert witness in such capacity. And at this point, I think it's necessary to point out a bit of context here. As you know already, but as we should state again, we, the defence, have been bombarded with disclosures and requests for the admission of new evidence for nearly two years now, while also trying to participate full-time in hearings here. It's also worth noting, I think, that last week, when we made oral submissions on Rule 87 requests and our Rule 93 request concerning this expert witness, the prosecution criticized us heavily for allegedly being late in making our Rule 93 request. Frankly speaking, I think that's the pot calling the kettle black here. So, in summary, what we would like is to know why the prosecution is disclosing these documents, especially in relation to documents number one and number three, for which no reason appears to have been provided. And secondly, we would like to know, I mean, as we've already mentioned, the documents to which the disclosures relate were admitted into evidence a long time ago. They failed to explain why they are only disclosing them now, and not at a time when we could review them and use them to challenge the admissibility of the relevant documents. And finally, we should point out that if and when we do finally receive access to these documents, we may also wish to recall the expert witness at a later date depending on the documents disclosed. 
Thank you very much. Les témoins espèrent une date ultérieure selon la nature des documents communiqués. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Council for Noon Chair. Le Président. And now I'd like to hand the floor to Merci. the defense team for key support to respond to that submission la parole, by the OCP. I'd like to pass the floor to the defense team for key support to respond to that submission by the OCP. Monsieur le Président, bonjour. Je pense que vous ne Good me demandez morning, pas Mr. de répondre à la requête du procureur I sur les documents auxquels nous n'avons pas accès, mais simplement peut-être de donner des, des observations sur ce que Perhaps vient de dire uh, uh, ma consoeur. Uh, simplement, uh, uh, oui, effectivement, nous avons constaté, quite simply, comme le uh, yes, de nous uh, as ce, ce, ces communications de documents, peut-être pour rajouter au niveau de la chronologie, c'est vrai qu'il y a un certain nombre de documents Regarding uh, chrono chronology, there's a number of documents, uh, uh, two in particular, uh, as my colleague uh, stated, that are submitted que, uh, with a report by someone NG, from the que, same NGO que uh, qui as the expert um, who is going to appear. Que, I would like uh, to simply point uh, out that documents étaient, uh, not only uh, were these documents available on the 17th of December 2015, les causes d'instruction, uh, mais que de surcroît, uh, dans leur the requête du 25 uh, juillet 2016, de 3152, uh, les coprocureurs évoquaient déjà les documents en lien avec uh, ce, ce même rapport et cette même personne qui a été interrogée. Donc, uh, même si on ne comprenait pas le, le caractère tardif um, de uh, cette communication this, uh, qui avait été faite depuis le 17 décembre 2015, since they were already available in seven, on the 17th of December 2015, on the 7th of December 2015 as well, they were also available. And even the prosecution, when the prosecution present the motion, it is 1-9-5-2, they refer to the existence of that document since they are motion uh, had to do with uh, an application to admit into evidence documents that were in the same batch, and I do not understand why they waited éléments que je voulais euh, rajouter, mais vous verrez que euh, le document numéro 27 de l'annexe E319-352.2 de la requête que je citais de uh, juillet uh, 2016 par les coprocureurs, des documents qui sont du même lot que celui que nous communiquons hier. Ils sont du même batch que le document que la prosecution veut uh, avoir admis à l'évidence, à cause de la motion made yesterday. Thank you, and I hand the floor now to Merci. the lead co-lawyers for civil parties, if you wish uh, to uh, do so. But, um, good morning, Mr. President. Mr. We do not have any observations to make. Thank you. Je vous I now hand the floor to the co-prosecutor to respond to those observations. Uh, good morning, uh, Your Honours, Mr. President. Bonjour, um, juge, Monsieur le Président. Firstly, in relation to the disclosure of these documents, en ce qui la um, de ces documents authorization to disclose most of the documents is given by documents uh, the co-investigative judges on the uh, 31st of August this month or last month. A été donné um, le 31 août as a result of a, of a review of those documents, Suite à um, de ces documents there were four documents relating to documents surveys produced by um, uh, Rochelle Braff, who produced a report Braff, on uh, sexual violence um, against uh, ethnic, ethnic minorities, and four of them, that's documents six to nine, related to um, statements from witnesses stating that they weren't um, forcibly married. Uh, that's why they were disclosed. Uh, they were also disclosed along with another 23 uh, documents from her study, uh, which state that um, 23 of those people were forcibly married, and there was an 87-4 application. Uh, that was put forward on the 1st of September. It was felt that it was appropriate if the prosecution were putting forward an 87-4 application of inculpatory materials relating to uh, forced marriage from the surveys used in this report, not of this witness, uh, but another report before the chamber, that it would be only fair that uh, the other four surveys be provided. 
um, Mais qui concerne nous avons demandé que ces documents soient fournis. fournis. Um, nous avons demandé que ces documents soient communiqués à, à la défense. Uh, none of those documents, those four surveys, um, stating that um, these four people weren't forcibly married. Aucune de ces quatre études ne factera le contre interrogatoire de ce témoin, du témoin expert d'aujourd'hui. En relation à l'accusation de complaint, en ce qui concerne les documents 1 et 3, il n'y a pas de raison pour laquelle ils sont disclosés. Si vous regardez l'annexe E319-59.2, vous pouvez voir que les documents sont disclosés. Si vous regardez l'annexe E319-59.2, vous pouvez voir que les documents sont disclosés. Documents, uh, statements documents from sont des déclarations proposed, uh, de témoins proposés uh, and they were proposed by the prosecution par le procureur au début and your de have advised us ce procès. On our disclosure obligations. Um, la Chambre nous a rappelé uh, nos obligations de well communication. Nous en sommes conscients de l'obligation de communiquer de manière continue les documents de recherche which is the disclosure decision dans E3-63. E3-63. August, October, sorry. Um, 2015, um, that we have an ongoing, ongoing obligation to disclose any exculpatory material um, right through the end of the trial. Um, and the defence um, would appreciate, as uh, documents are placed on the case file of case three and four, um, and as they're reviewed, and as authorization is given by the investigative judges, that there will be material that will relate to points in the proceedings that will be disclosed afterwards. Um, that's the nature of uh, having a trial and investigations running in parallel. Um, as long as that material is provided uh, with due diligence, and we state it definitely was uh, on the basis that authorization was given on the 31st um, of August for the majority of the material. When um, authorization was given for um, the underlying material from Rochelle Braff's report, which resu resulted in our 87.4 and exculpatory applications, it was also noted that um, she had a statement that was given to the investigative judges with an attached survey form, and that's the two documents named four and five. Now, there was, even though authorization to disclose those were given in, um, in December last year, um, Your Honours will remember the defence um, have complained uh, bitterly about um, being bombarded with information, um, certainly at the beginning of the trial and, and throughout. Um, both teams have complained that they've been receiving too much information. And as Your Honours are aware, um, the prosecution's approach to disclosure has been an expansive one. Um, from the beginning of the trial, it's always been the prosecution's view that any material that relates to um, incidents or events um, being heard in this trial should be disclosed to the defence. As a result of that wide um, approach to our sculptory obligations, which we adopted. Um, as Your Honours remember, the defence complained that they were receiving too much material. And uh, Your Honours will remember the new and Shia team at one stage basically saying they just don't want any more material. But regardless, uh, we still have our um, disclosure obligations. But then, with your decision, Your Honours, on uh, the 22nd of October 15, um, that's E363, Your Honours brought in a, a more stricter regime, um, uh, one which... Um, urged the prosecution to focus their disclosures, particularly in relation to exculpatory, not, to not everything that relates to um, events and incidents on a, that are on trial, but to uh, material that is um, on its face, truly, truly exculpatory. So once that decision was uh, received, even though the statement of Rochelle Braff um, was on the case file um, and we'd received authority to disclose it back in 2015 after the narrower um, disclosure obligations that uh, Your Honours placed on the prosecution. Um, at that stage, 
it was thought, it was thought that um, it wouldn't fit within the criteria that Your Honour set. And certainly her statement and, um, and the survey form uh, is not exculpatory. It's information in relation to the uh, production of the report. It doesn't contain exculpatory information. And so on that narrow regime, um, it was decided by the prosecution that those um, documents uh, would not be disclosed, and that's documents four and five in the annex. However, when we did the review of the underlying material of Rochelle Braff's report, as we, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, um, of the, the 47 surveys that supported her report, we put forward 23 um, as a Rule 87.4 application as being exculpatory. When we did that, we then thought it was appropriate to put forward the other four um, uh, surveys which stated that uh, these um, interviewees were not forcibly married. It was done on that basis. And then the decision was made that if we're putting forward the surveys, um, it would be helpful for the defence that they actually have the methodology and so we decided to put the statement forward then. But certainly um, that statement um, of Rochelle Braff, you see at um, four and five, they don't contain um, exculpatory material, but it's um, simply just been helpful um, to the defence. Um, Your Honours, um, in relation to um, today's testimony, uh, you've seen the material. I'll, I'll wrap up, Your Honour. We've seen the material, and uh, I think it's quite clear that uh, uh, this witness will be able to uh, testify um, that that material um, doesn't impact um, any significantly uh, to a testimony. And I will remind Your Honours, um, when the defence, Nguyen Chia, starts talking about due diligence um, of the prosecution, uh, they were the ones last week that uh, asked for 2,200 a document to be provided um, by the expert within seven days, um, and yet they knew the expert was appearing before this court on the 3rd of June. Um, and one final report uh, point in relation to uh, New and, Chir New and Chir's submission that it was on the basis of Rochelle Braff's report, um, or part of the basis, uh, that um, this witness was called to testify, um, that's not correct. This witness was called to testify, as you can see from the decision, on the basis of her report, not on the basis of uh, another person that produced a report. Can I just try to focus on the point that was made yesterday? Now, as a piece of information, it takes us about 48 hours between disclosure and um, allowing the parties access. So this is clearly not helpful. Getting a disclosure at 4 o'clock, the day before expert testimony starts, is clearly not helpful, to put it mildly. And I would have expected submissions or, or explanations by the prosecution to focus on this part of the well, complaint. Thank you. 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 Thank The timing is just coincidental. Um, the authorization for these documents came on the um, uh, 31st of August. Um, that was within 12 days. Um, the 87.4 applications uh, which Your Honours um, had asked for um, the final 87.4 applications, perhaps with some exceptions, was due um, on the 1st of September. Um, the prosecution prioritised those documents, those um, other 23 surveys, um, and put them forward as 87.4, and these four extra surveys were then attended to and then disclosed. Um, if I can just say one last thing. Uh, Your Honours, the prosecution's case, um, certainly, I mean, it's difficult for the defence, they haven't got the material. The prosecution's case is not that uh, every 
person that was married um, in Cambodia during Democratic Cambodia was forcibly married. That's not the case. But what the prosecution's case is, there was a system of forcible marriages. The fact that uh, these four surveys um, state that four people said that they weren't forcibly married um, is not um, uh, directly uh, exculpatory to the case, but it's important um, that that, that material be disclosed. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Merci Just a few Monsieur brief Président. remarks Quelque in response. Uh, from what we heard from the prosecution's submissions, it's still unclear to us why this disclosure has occurred only now, when some of the documents date back from as early as November 2013. Uh, one other point is, from what we understood from oral submissions made in the court by the international co-prosecutor a few weeks ago, uh, the prosecution had allegedly cleared whatever backlog it was that they had in terms of materials that needed to be disclosed to us. We understood that to mean all documents that were dated earlier than whenever we had that discussion, I think it was August 2016, if they were relevant, they had been disclosed to us, and that moving forward, any future disclosures we would receive would only be documents that had been produced after that date. It now appears that that is incorrect, so we're just at a loss as to what this means in terms of whether we're going to be receiving future disclosures relevant to trial segments moving forward. And just one last point is that last week when we made the oral submissions with respect to the Rule 83 and Rule 93 requests that we were making with respect to this upcoming expert witness, uh, the prosecution was the one to note that this trial topic had been included in case to, to slash two for a long time, and that therefore we should have known what kind of material would be relevant and ought to be requested. Again, I think that's a principle that should apply equally to the prosecution. Thank you very much. President, the Chamber is now well aware of uh, the issues, and uh, the Chamber would like to conclude the discussion on the topic now. Number two, the Chamber received uh, an email from the co-prosecutor in relation to two marks, one of which is intended to be used by the co-prosecutors when examining the Experts. So the co-prosecutor would like to request to admit the map into evidence. And now the chamber is hearing the submissions on the request to admit that map. And the floor first is given to the defense team for Mr. Nguyenji. You may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. We don't oppose the admission of this map. The only thing that we would point out is we were all required to submit lists of documents that we intended to use for this expert some time ago. We adhered to that, and that obviously took us a lot of resources to be able to do so at that point. So we seem to think that this is a rather late request, but we don't oppose the admission of the document. President, thank you, Council, and um, Ms. the defence team for Mr. Kirsten Pond, you may now proceed if you want to address the Chamber. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I must say that uh, I'm not quite sure la question de la, of um, la carte commentée. the uh, issue of the commented map. I understood that the basis of the map that the prosecution wishes to si use C'est un document qui a un numéro 3 qui est E3 2959. Si je comprends le principe de la carte commentée, c'est que c'est le procureur lui-même qui a annoté who uh, annotated uh, uh, a map that already existed on the case file. case file. So it's not an annotation Donc, coming from the si expert. So if it's an annotation uh, coming from the prosecutor himself, à, we uh, object que uh, cette carte soit versée, puisque, to uh, use pas là this pour, uh, map de la preuve, because we're not here to create evidence. Either we have the expert comment the map and the expert will annotate it, De faire elle -même des but none of the parties should uh, comment uh, documents that should be tendered into evidence. 
But de, if I didn't understand de, de, de l'accusation, uh, je suis prêt à être corrigé. Uh, en tout cas, properly, si ce sont des commentaires qui sont portés par l'accusation elle-même, nous opposons à ce qu'il y ait des commentaires par la prosecution elle-même, nous allons opposer à tenir ça en évidence. Um, uh, I guess we should perhaps give the prosecution a chance to actually make the request in a formal way. But having said that, the good news is we have just been informed by staff that the, the documents that have been disclosed are available effective now for the parties. And you may not proceed, but please uh, be it, uh, make it brief. Mais soyez bref. Um, Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Uh, we don't believe the map is on the case file. Nous um, ne pensons pas E329 que cette, uh, is, the, is the book of the expert. Um, the reason why uh, we propose putting the map forward is that will assist in um, helping perhaps the witness to explain um, the different locations um, that uh, her studies were conducted in in Cambodia at the different provinces. And um, perhaps it would give a, an easier a graphical representation of that so we can understand her evidence more clearly. In relation to the um, annotations on the map, um, they are largely from, like, are from uh, the uh, areas in which um, this expert and um, the other expert reports that are before your honours, uh, the area in which they conducted their, their surveys of, uh, in relation to, to forcible, uh, in relation to sexual violence. And so um, what the proposal would be is when we're discussing that report, Donc, lorsque nous um, allons discuter any de ce particular rapport, report ce que with the witness, that uh, that annotated map go up that would visually represent uh, the results of where those surveys were conducted. So it's not a submission by the prosecution, just une, un aperçu um, des interposing um, de the, some Donc, of the data from the other expert reports, just to help il uh, in simplement the discussion. De à la so, I mean, the annotated Et ones um, we're quite happy that it's just used for demonstration purposes, but the, the actual core map de de of the Cambodian network map, we would ask that, uh, that be committed into evidence uh, to assist in uh, understanding the evidence, this evidence and other evidence in the case. Ces, uh, de et d'autres éléments de preuve au dossier. Thank you. President, je Mr. Vous Deputy Co-Prosecutor, and now the lead co-lawyers for civil party, if La you wish to respond. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank bon you, Mr. Tous. President. Nous Good morning to all of you. We have no comments sur la carte. regarding the map. President, thank you, lead co-lawyer for civil parties. Je vous remercie, Maître. Just an issue of, for the prosecution, short question. Question rapide à l'attention de la Short question, only organization. Do you need the maps until the break? Or can we make the decision after the break? La pause, um, nous that can notre décision. À la pause. Okay. So peut attendre, dit l'accusation.
President, we now resume the hearing. President, Cut off, sir, please uh, invite two TCE 82 into the court room. Du témoin expert, huissier d'audience, veuillez faire entrer le témoin à la barre. President. Good morning, the expert. What is your name? Madame l'expert, bonjour. Quel est votre Good morning. nom? Good morning. My name is bonjour. Kasumi Nakagawa. Je me nomme Kasumi Nakagawa. When were you born? Quelle est votre date de naissance? I was born in 1972, June 11. 11 juin 1972. What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? I am a Japanese. Réponse, je suis japonaise. Question. Thank you, Miss Expert. And Madame what is your current place of residence? My official residence is in Japan, Kobe. Je réside officiellement à Kobe, au Japon. Thank you. And what is your current occupation? Quelle est votre profession? I am um, teaching at Panyasastra University of Cambodia in Phnom Penh. President, thank you. What religion do you believe or follow? I do not follow any religion. Réponse, je ne suis aucune religion. President, thank you. Question, je vous remercie. The greffier made an, an oral report this morning that, to the best matin, of your knowledge, you are not related by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nunchia and Kyusumpon, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. President, je vous remercie. Thank you, Miss Expert. Miss Ex Ms. Kazumi, pursuant to internal rule 31.2 of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia and as an expert witness before the chamber, you are required to take an oath or affirmation in accordance with your religion first prior to your testimony before the chamber. Greffier, Madalena, please lead the all taking proceedings of the expert before the chamber. Good morning, Ms. Nakagawa, please stand up and please repeat after me. I solemnly swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly confidentially and to the best of my ability. Thank you. President, 
the chamber and the party are grateful to you for coming to 25 parties, to, in, before the chamber in the ascertainment of the truth devant la chambre afin de contribuer for la the Cambodian people. La pour le and Cambodian. the chamber is now asking you about la your academic background and a number of your writings. Miss Kazumi, can you tell the chamber uh, Kazumi, about your educational education background? Quelle est votre formation? Thank you. Um, all my academic backgrounds are done in Japan. Um, after I completed my high school, I entered the Kwansei Gakuin University in 1991. And finished in 1995. En 1995. And I studied about Pol Pot. And my bachelor degree was about Pol Pot. How Pol Pot, Pot took power Comment from Pol the political Pot point of view and also politique. from the international relations perspective at the time. And I continued my master degree at Osaka University from 1996, which I completed in, nine, uh, so excuse me, in 2000. And I studied and investigated about the Japanese foreign policy towards Cambodia, particularly in the field of culture. And I got the, my master's degree in international public policy from Osaka University in 2000. Question. Thank you, Miss Expert. When did you arrive in Cambodia and Quand for what purpose? Au Cambodge et quel était votre objectif à ce moment-là? For the first time, I came as a tourist to Cambodia in 1995, but I came to Cambodia to work in 1997 as a special assistant to the Japanese Embassy in Phnom Penh, employed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Japan. And I worked in the embassy for two years until 1999, March. President, thank you. Merci. Uh, can you uh, read, write, uh, listen, and speak my fluently? Thank you very much for asking. The, I'm very happy to also speak in Khmer. I read Khmer, but my Khmer writing is very bad. President, thank you, Miss Expert. As of now, what topics have you studied and researched in relation jour, to Cambodia and in particular uh, the democratic Cambodia? Thank you very much. Um, as a gender expert, I have done a lot of researches about gender or women in Cambodia and have many publications on that. I have been working with UN, international and national NGOs, and particularly with the government of Cambodia, Ministry of Women's Affairs, as a consultant and has studied a lot about Cambodian women and men, also not only at the grassroots level, but also to engage in the policy formulation of the government. In regard to the democratic Kampuchea, or Khmer Rouge, the, I have done some studies so far which all relate to the topic of the day, forced marriage. The first one was back in 2006, when I was working at the Cambodian NGO called Cambodian Defenders Project, that I was a project manager to carry out the study on sexual violence, or I call it gender-based violence, during the Khmer Rouge regime. 
And this research documented many stories of sexual violence against women and forced marriages and rape in the forced marriages during the democratic Kampuchea in 2006. The second one, I did a research in 2008 on the same topic, but it was particularly only for the sexual violence and forced marriages. I did with my students approximately 200 students that I had at Panyasastra universities, and we did the research into the topic. And in 2014, I did another research on gender-based violence against sexual minorities during the Pol Pot regime or Khmer Rouge regime, and I documented many stories of sexual violence and forced marriages that attacked the sexual minorities in a very different way from many Cambodians. From 2014 to 2015, I did another research that I titled Motherhood at War, which I wanted to investigate the pregnancy during the Khmer Rouge time. And I also documented many stories of marriages and rape or pregnancies in the Khmer Rouge time. After this, since exactly one year ago until now, I have been doing another study on childhood at war, which I investigate the life of children during the Khmer Rouge time, that how the children were denied their childhood in the war, and I also collected many stories of forced marriages that small girls were forced into marriages. That so far, I have done those researches on particularly about the democratic Kampuchea. President, why are you interested in, conducted, in conducting your research on this topic? Thank you so much for asking. The simple answer is I want to know why it happened. When I was in university, the, there were a lot of mixed information about democratic Kampuchea and I couldn't find out why it happened, why Khmer Rouge took power and why many people had to be dead or killed in the Khmer Rouge time. And I continued on to have this curiosity that I want to know why it happened. But because of my expertise, that I am a gender expert, I was particularly interested how women were affected by the war, how women were disproportionately impacted because of the regime. And I couldn't find studies. When I was teaching in the class, my students did not know about anything. They didn't know anything about sexual violence. They didn't know anything about forced marriages in, during the Khmer Rouge. So I thought I could contribute by gathering the information and evidences of why it happened, particularly from women's point of view because so far we don't have any historical evidence from women's point of view. All histories about Khmer Rouge were written by men from male perspectives. So that's why I was very motivated to do those researches. President, thank you, Ms. Expert. When did you start? Conducting, conducting your work titled 
quote unquote gender based violence during the Khmer Rouge à regime. Les pour Stories votre of the survivors uh, for the Democratic Cambodia in 1975 uh, through 1979. And when was the first publication? Quelle a été la date de publication? Uh, thank you very much. I started the, to have the idea in 2005, and it was very difficult to find a sponsor. So it was only in 2006 that I could manage to make a team to do the research within the Cambodian Defenders Project. And, um, my, and after the research, it was very, very painful research for me personally because I continuously listened to the horrible stories from the survivors who experienced the terrific, horrific, traumatic experience. So I paused a little and I wrote a small piece of research paper by using the evidence in Japanese first. So the very first publication was actually in Japanese. It was like my brainstorming to construct how I can write a book. And then I published the first book in July 2007. This is the book, the first publication in English um, that I collected those stories that I personally want to use in my publications. And the, if I may add to your honor, si the, I used the same body of this document to write this book that maybe you have have in your hand. De, de this has the additional information from my research in 2008. Sorry for interrupting. The record doesn't see what you are doing. So if you are referring to books, please refer to the titles. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, let me go back. The, my first publication that your owner asked me was back in 2007, July, titled Gender-Based Violence During the Khmer Rouge Regime. Stories of Survivors from the Democratic Kampuchea, 1975-1979. And I used the same information from that book and published the book in December 2008, titled Gender-Based Violence During the Khmer Rouge, Stories of Survivors from the Democratic Kampuchea, 1979-1979, the second edition. Thank you. Thank you. Le président. What areas or issues did you conduct your research in producing this report? Merci. And please make it brief. Lorsque vous avez rédigé ces rapports, sur quelles questions ou sur quels thèmes en particulier vous êtes-vous concentré? Soyez bref. Thank you very much. The Je vous remercie. initial idea was I wanted to collect any stories that were linking départ, to sexual violence during the Democratic Kampuchea. I, I didn't have a specific idea of what type, but through my baseline interviews with Mais people in Phnom Penh, particularly activists and academics, I knew that there was rape. So rape was one of the primary target of my investigations. And through those investigations, we came up to know other forms of sexual violence that we also documented. Thank you. And what uh, research methodology did you use in producing your report? What are the sources of information for your report? Did you interview people? And if so, who they were and how many? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, this research was carried out by the Merci. Cambodian Defen Cette Defenders Project, which I was a project manager for project. this project and also the publication and advocacy unit. 
So we mobilized our resources within this uh, human rights NGO. The, the NGO had a quite a large number of volunteers, mostly from the line of the provincial department of women's affairs, who were helping the women in the villages who are suffering from domestic violence or other forms of gender-based violence. So we asked their cooperation and 50 of those people became the volunteers from five provinces and we trained 10 volunteers out of 50 in Phnom Penh. We conducted an intensive training for two days for those 10 researchers who go into the village to do the baseline study. So after the two days training, 10 volunteers who are trained went back to their own provinces and trained other remaining 40 volunteers to do the research. In total, 50 volunteers. They collected total 1,500 information, 1,500 people's evidence of their experiences during the Khmer Rouge time. And 300 from each province, so five provinces. And all the data was collected by handwriting from the volunteers. And they were sent back to the head office of the Cambodian Defenders Project. And we screened out of those 1,500 people who could tell the stories of sexual violences with the evidence to the researchers, that is to me. And we selected, if I am not wrong, we selected about 100 people out of 1,500 whom we thought that we should meet to do the interviews. In the questionnaires in baseline, we had a question. Did you witness the sexual violence? Did you experience the sexual violence? And the last question in many, many questions on the bottom was, if there is a foreign researcher coming to ask you to interview about sexual violence during the Democratic Cambodia, do you have something to tell? And then if somebody who clicked this, based on the information they gave, we also selected those people to do actual interview. So first baseline was for 1,500 people in five provinces, and we selected approximately 100 people to meet, to actually listen to their stories, and uh, my team, consisting of me Notre and one uh, another researchers with a uh, translator, we went to conduct the interviews separately in different provinces. And my memory is not correct, but I met approximately 50 plus people within my capacity as a researcher in this research. And after uh, we document, we tape recorded all the conversations with strict confidentiality. And after we brought Dans back all the tape recording, the, we had a person who made a transcript. So the tape recording interview was transcripted in Khmer first, and we hired the translator who translated all those transcripts. And then those final products in English were used as a base for the studies. Thank you. And you also produced another report entitled I Want to Tell You Stories of Sexual Violence During Democratic Cambodia. That is document E3-3416. Can you tell the Chamber when did you start your research in order to write the report and when it was first published? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Um, this report was not written by me. 
It was written by Ms. Bridget, who was a research team member in my team in the research. She was my colleague. We conducted the research together. And she produced this paper based on her background as a lawyer. So she has a lot of legal analysis. And I did not touch upon this paper. Participer à la rédaction de ce rapport. Rancourt Kenya. Thank you. Le président. Je vous remercie. And can you tell the chamber what issues uh, were the main focus of this report? Vous dire you can chambre. describe it briefly. Donc, quelles sont les principales thématiques sur lesquelles vous êtes concentré dans ce rapport? The. I may be wrong. But we share, Ms. Bridget and I share the common goal that we, doc we want to document the evidences of sexual violence during the democratic Cambodia. So her purpose was one of the main purpose should have been to gather the evidence. But in addition, because she was an intern at Cambodian Defenders Project, this um, not dispatched, but she came from the Harvard University, and it was one of her coursework. So I think she wanted to also bring some legal arguments about the sexual violence during the democratic Kampuchea. Sur les violences sexuelles pendant le Kampuchea démocratique. And can you tell the chamber the sources of reference in producing the report and how many people were interviewed? Estime me, Your Honor, is it about I want to tell you report? The, the sources, the evidences from the survivors are the same. We use the same evidences from approximately 100 people's tape recording and transcript and the translation. So we use the same evidences. But for the interviews with the experts or the references, or the literature review references, um, I think she referred many from the international tribunals and other documentations that we also shared from Cambodia about the democratic Kampuchea. Thank you. I'd like to hand to Judge Fens. Rather to Judge Lavergne. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Yes, thank you, en fait, Mr. President. avant que nous puissions nous prononcer fact, sur les demandes de recevabilité concernant les cartes qui sont proposées par les procureurs, uh, j'aimerais avoir un certain nombre de précisions. The, uh, si j'ai bien Our compris, Monsieur le Procureur, vous demandez à ce que, soit, à ce que six cartes soient déclarées recevables. Et ces six cartes sont euh, Pour la première, en tous les cas, une carte concernant l'état de réseau routier du Cambodge qui comporte pas d'indication particulière. Et pour les cinq autres cartes, il s'agit de cartes qui contiennent des indications de zones géographiques. Ces indications apparaissent sous forme de points rouges ou oranges. Si j'ai bien compris, Il y a and if I understood cartes, correctly, chaque, there are five uh, maps. Chacune de ces cinq cartes correspond each of those à five maps correspond to specific studies conducted. Qui ont été soit menées studies par that were either conducted by the expert témoigner, here present and who is about to testify, or studies ce que that were conducted by other researchers. What I didn't quite understand in à quoi correspondent ces indications de zone géographique Est-ce que ces indications de zone géographique correspondent aux lieux où ont été menées les recherches Est-ce que ces indications de zone géographique correspondent aux lieux où des violences sexuelles ont été rapportées, ont été commises Et est-ce que toutes ces études and do all these studies that served as a basis for the 
est-ce que um, toutes ces études ont été déclarées recevables et ont studies, été et sont au uh, dossier Um, studies voilà. that were que nous savoir admitted into evidence are on record. De, uh, de so ces, we should know the precise purpose purpose of those maps. And de uh, are these the maps présente. that you intend to use in examining the expert here present? Um, thank you, Your Honor. The, um, Merci, Monsieur le juge. the core basis of the application is that the underlying de map, the Cambodia road network map, be admitted into evidence. That's unannotated. That's the core application. The annotated map, which show um, the areas, the geographical zones, as you mentioned, uh, in fact, provinces, um, where the uh, authors of the reports um, sought their information as the basis of the report. Ont tiré leur information and qui de base it's not rapport. clear in some cases Dans cas, whether or not the provinces in which they si sought their information, ne, conducted their surveys, whether in fact um, in, all, in all of those reports they received uh, reports of um, forced marriage within those particular provinces. Um, all the reports are on the case file. And um, I do have copies of these maps uh, for your honours. And in the annotated maps, we provide the E3 number of the report to which the uh, annotations relate. But the main purpose was to be able to use a map as a witness. When we discuss the particular reports nous, nous and the locations in which carte, um, these surveys were done in relation to sexual violence et and, and particularly in relation to forced marriage, we could show that on the screen. And uh, I would take uh, the expert to the um, appropriate page in the report where they state that um, they conducted their surveys so at least the public can see, follow the, um, uh, follow the evidence. But the primary purpose is to put the underlying map into evidence. And secondly, at the very least, be able to show the annotations on the screen to the witness to have a discussion. Uh, but that could be either done for, uh, in terms of demonstration, for demonstration purposes, or secondly, um, if your honours wish them to be entered into evidence after her testimony, um, uh, we would certainly um, be pleased to, to do that. But it's largely the underlying map and to be able to use the annotated ones on the screen when discussing the particular reports with the expert. And I do have copies, if your honours would like copies, um, to take with you to the break. Um, I have them here. Um, thank you, Your Honour. Um, I'm afraid that um, Monsieur le procureur, dans le mail que nous avons Council reçu, il y avait six jointes. Je n'ai pas très compris. Il me semble qu'aujourd'hui, vous demandez est-ce que toutes les cartes sont déclarées recevables. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous indiquer directement quelle est votre demande Est-ce que c'est pour six cartes Est-ce que c'est pour quatre cartes Est-ce que c'est pour six cartes pour être admises en évidence ou pour quatre cartes pour être admises en évidence uh, Your Honour, we are asking for one map uh, to be admitted into evidence at this stage. It's the Cambodia Road Network map without any annotations. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Quite simply, taking into account the clarifications made by the prosecution, if the only objective is to have one map without annotations admitted into evidence, the case of Pan defense team doesn't object to the map that is not annotated to be used. As to the background knowledge on the uh, annotations, we will rely on the decision that you delivered in a similar case that was on the 21st of January 2015. It was at the hearing, PVE1-2. 
49.1 at about 9, 12 and 58 seconds. It was a civil party for lawyer who wanted to tender into evidence a document, a map that uh, he himself had annotated uh, in, in line with the uh, testimony of the civil party who was being testified and uh, was testifying and you rejected that application saying that a map produced by a lawyer could not be admitted into evidence. So I request you to uh, follow your jurisprudence. Thank you, Councillor. It is now time for the morning break. We will take a 20 minutes break from the une pause de 20 minutes.